welcome again to my youtube channel today i'm going to continue with the topic pan boiling and centrifugation as the fifth section of sugarcane processing syrup cannot be exhausted in a single crystallization step the process of sugar boiling must therefore consist of a series of crystallization steps which result in progressively decreasing product purities the number of steps is controlled by financial considerations at some stage, the cost of recovering the sucrose is higher than the returns obtained by selling this sugar. Most sugar industries prefer the use of three steps, i.e. Masecute A, B, and C. In the previous video, I had covered preparation of A, Masecute, and today I'm going to cover B and C. Let's start with preparation of B, Masecute. A molasses separated from A masecute has purity of around 70%. So it's pumped to pan B to prepare B masecute. Below is the procedure that is followed to prepare B masecute. Number one, A molasses and hot water is fed to pan B till the calandria is covered. The function of hot water is to dissolve any false grain in the molasses. Next, Hot water is closed, then feeding of air molasses is continued up to around 190 hectoliters, then stopped. Material in the pan is bricks to 85 degrees bricks. Remember, this is the metastable zone of saturation. Slurry is prepared by mixing icing sugar and organic solvent like methylated spirit, then fed to the pan. Icing sugar has tiny crystals which induce crystallization. After introducing slurry in the pan, the material is boiled until the crystals are seen on the glass slide. Boiling enables the crystals to adapt and start growing. The sugar crystal growth takes place as a result of two processes, i.e. transfer of sucrose molecules from the bulk of solution to the surface of crystals and incorporation of these molecules in the crystal lattice. The next step is hardening. Hot water is again added to the material to make crystals have rough texture and also wash any false grains. Remember, crystals with rough texture absorb sucrose at a faster rate. Viscosity reducer is added to the material to make it less viscous. The material is bricked to remove excess water, then feeding of emolases is continued while boiling up to the required level. The B masecute formed is bricked again to around 93 and 94 degrees bricks, then dropped to crystallizer to cool and also to allow further growth of crystals. The requirements of organic solvent to be used for seed slurry preparation are number one, boiling point of organic solvent should be lower than the boiling point of water, so that after introduction of slurry, all organic solvent gets evaporated and crystal gets spread well in the pan. Number two, solubility of sucrose in such organic solvent should be minimum or negligible. Number three, solubility should not give any odor to the sugar. Let's see how the formed B sugar is separated from the molasses. After four hours of cooling, B masecute is dropped to continuous centrifuge B to separate B sugar from B molasses. This centrifuge revolve at a speed of around 1600 revolution per minute. Hot water is added to B masecute as it enters the centrifuge to increase its temperature from 45 to 55 degrees Celsius and also to reduce its viscosity. As the centrifuge spin, molasses pass through the screen to B molasses tank while B sugar moves upward and is dropped to B magma mixer. Water is added to B sugar to enhance lubrication for easy pumping. B sugar plus water make B magma. B magma is pumped to B seed tank at the pan floor to be used as seeding in pan A. B molasses is pumped to dilution tank where water and viscosity reducer is added, then pumped to pan boiling section. This molasses is used to prepare C masecute. Purity of M molasses used in B masecute has to be put in consideration because B sugar has an important effect on the quality of sugar produced in pan A. Remember B sugar is used as seeding in pan A. Recommended M molasses purity is 70%. In case purity is below, 
70, the Combenzis formula is used to calculate the amount of syrup that can be mixed with a certain quantity of emulases to obtain the purity of 70. So here for example, our syrup has purity of 85 and emulases has purity of 63. The recommended purity is 70. So you'll take 85 minus 70, you get 15. And 63 minus 70, you get 13. Total ratio will be 13 plus 15, which is 28. So in case the target volume of, of material in the pan is 480 hectoliters, the quantity of syrup will be 13 over 28 times 480, while the quantity of emolasses will be 15 over 28 times 480. Let's cover the preparation of C-Masecute. B-molasses from B-Masecute has around 50% sucrose, is taken to pan C for final sucrose exhaustion. This molasses and hot water is fed to the pan up to 160 hectoliters level. Hot water is closed. Remember, the work of hot water is to dissolve all the false grains in the molasses. Feeding of molasses is continued to around 190 hectoliters, then stopped. Material in the pan is concentrated to metastable zone of saturation. Prepared slurry is then fed to the pan. The material in the pan is boiled until the crystals are seen on the glass slide. Icing sugar used in C graining is more than that used in B graining because B molasses has lower purity than A molasses. Hot water is again added to material to make crystals have rough texture and also wash any false grains. Remember, rag crystals with rough texture absorb sucrose faster than those which are smooth. After washing, viscosity reducer is added to the material. The work of viscosity reducer is to reduce viscosity of materials in the pan for efficient boiling and circulation. The material is mixed again to remove excess water. Feeding of bee molasses is continued up to the required level. Then the material in the pan is bricks to around 96 and 99 degrees bricks. Sea massacute formed is dropped to crystallizer for cooling and further crystal growth. Gradual lowering of sea massacute temperature results in reduction in the solubility of sucrose in the molasses with consequent deposition of sucrose on the existing crystal. C massacute need longer cooling time than B massacute because the purity of B heavy is low, hence sucrose molecules cover long distance to travel to form crystals. Massacute in the crystallizer is slowly stirred while it cools in order to reduce formation of conglomerates. Let's see how the formed crystals are separated from the mother liga. After 7 hours of cooling, C massacute is dropped to continuous centrifuge C for separation. This centrifuge revolves at a speed of around 1800 revolutions per minute. C massacute is first heated by the steam to raise its temperature. Hot water is also added to C massacute as it enters the centrifuge to make it less viscous. As the centrifuge spin, final molasses pass through the screen to final molasses tank, while C sugar moves upwards and is dropped to C magma mixer. Water is added to C sugar to form C magma for easy pumping. C magma is pumped to remelt tank to be remelted to liquid form. Remember, the solution form is taken to pan A to raise the purity of syrup. Final molasses is pumped to storage tank. It has around 30% sucrose. It also has higher concentrations of inorganic constituents which tend to hinder further crystallization of sucrose. It's therefore sold to other companies which use it to make alcohol, animal feeds, sweets or microbiological media. That's the end of pan boiling and centrifugation. In the next video, I'll cover drying, cooling, grading and packaging of final sugar. Thank you very much for watching my video. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I kindly request you to subscribe. Thank you.